evening, everyone, and welcome. It's so lovely to have you here at this second concert of the Boston Festival of New Jewish Music. My name is Nat Seelan. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the artistic director, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to this evening and to our community. I just have a few words before we get started, but I promise it's really, really short, okay? The Boston Festival of New Jewish Music is a free monthly concert series presenting original music drawing from the Jewish cultural experience. Hosted by the Boston Synagogue, co-presented by J Arts and live streaming everywhere, the Boston Festival of New Jewish Music highlights the best in Jewish influenced music by composers and performers who live right here in our own backyard in Boston. This concert series is free to attend, but it is definitely not free to produce. And especially after this past year and a half of canceled tours and postponed concerts, it's really important for us to make sure that all of the musicians are getting paid appropriately too. So if you like what you're hearing tonight, if you want to support new music and support artists doing beautiful things here in Boston, uh, we do invite you to make a donation. We have donation envelopes in the back, um, and we're happy for whatever you're open to giving. So if you have $5, you're going to spend that on a late night samosa run, and instead you want to put it towards great live music, we would welcome that. If you have a couple of hundred thousand dollars and you don't know what to do with it, um, don't drop it in that basket. Talk to me, because we know what to do with it. We'll do good things with it. Um, and you can drop it in the basket, but you can also use your phone. You can find us at paypal.me slash bfnjm, like the Boston Festival of New Jewish Music. Um, and the donation envelopes in the back also have that address, so you can donate directly online. This concert is funded in part by the New England State's Touring Program of the New England Foundation for the Arts, made possible with funding from the National Endowment for the Arts Regional Touring Program and the six New England State Agencies. And we really do want to say thank you to NIFA for making that possible. Um, they're putting a lot of effort, a lot of resources out into local arts presenters and musicians. Um, and we'd also like to extend a huge thank you to our partner organizations who believe in our mission and are helping to make it possible. That's the Boston Synagogue, J Arts, the CJP, The Forward, the Center for Traditional Music and Dance, Klesteval, and Yiddish Summer Weimar. We're adding more partners by the day, and we couldn't ask for finer company to be in. After the concert, we invite you to hang around. We're going to have an audience Q&A session with Yeko to learn more about her music and her life uh, I am really excited about it. There's also a bar set up in the back for donation, uh, by donations. So if you want to loosen up before asking a question, you're welcome to do so. And Diego has albums available in the back too. Um, also by donations. So whatever you think the music is worth to bring home, drop it in the bucket and take a CD or seven or 40. I have 40 set up, so 40 for you. Um, but most importantly, we invite you to make friends find your family, to build a community here with us tonight. You can view our full season and reserve free tickets for in-person or streaming at bostonjewishmusic.org. And we'll be here every month, and we hope to see a lot more of every one of you. So with that, put your hands together for the Yako Miranda El Malak Quartet.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here tonight. We're really happy to be playing. Um, that first song has no title. I've been playing it for years. We just call it the Doina medley. It's kind of like the standard violin Doina that all Klesmer violinists learn. Um, we're, we haven't played together in like a year, actually. <laughs> it's been a long time. So um, during the pandemic, I got into a little bit of composing. Um, and we're going to play a tango that I wrote. It also has no name yet. <laughs> but it's a tango. <coughs>
Is it your join? Is this the join? Oh, it's the Paragowski or the join? Oh, it's Paragowski. Nice. What happened to mine? You know what? I may need to switch to my other violin right now because my A string is unraveling. Your A it's what? It's un my my A string's unraveling right now, oh. so I may have to switch instruments. <laughs>
Thank you. All right. Those are the three Baradovsky we do. in a row. We, we can talk about, about them that. during we the Q&A. Yeah. That's that is true. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I hope this violin. Hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> All right. Um, ah, what are we doing? Should so we do something we're more like? Doing, what? Should I do the Merlot, or do you want to switch it up, or? You want to do the Merlot right now? Or should we just go to? Let's do the Merlot. Let's, let's keep it up. I change, I change things up.
past. Yeah, actually, let me introduce these guys. Because, <laughs> well, Michael McLaughlin on accordion, who I've known for like 15 years now. What? I've known you for about 10, 15 10? years. I don't know. Something. Ago, We're like family. <laughs> so, okay, I'll play with you. <laughs> <laughs> and Grant Smith on percussion. <laughs> and I've known Grant even longer, like 20 years. <laughs> we've been playing together for a long time. And we've got Sean Farias on bass. <laughs> Sean and I recently met. <laughs> We're going back to, yeah. Oh, are we, are, we bringing, are we bringing it now? We might as well break, we broke our set list. So. <laughs> I'm so, I broke our set list, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good, it's a good song. Okay, I think so. So my doina? Yeah, let's do your doina. Right. This is beautiful. I don't think you need any other introduction. <laughs> Michael. <laughs>
perfect moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> So during the pandemic, um, let me just find my pick for a second before I say I'm going to play this. I had it somewhere. It fell? Where did it fall? Oh, here it is. It's the only one I have. <laughs> you should have Velcro on the window and Velcro here. <laughs> That's a good idea for as seen on TV. <laughs> so serious for musicians. Um, so yeah, I was saying during the pandemic, um, I did a lot of thinking and a lot of reflecting, and I started writing music and started painting. I was also stuck at home with both my kids. Um, <laughs> that was hard. It was a tough. It was tough for everyone. Um, and uh, I kind of teamed up with a friend of mine. She's a singer and a guitar player, and um, we started playing some songs together. And um, she got me singing. And then I decided I would take up the mandolin. And uh, I touched it back in like March or April, and picked it back up again today. I mean, this last week for today's gig. So I really don't know what I'm doing. It's my amateur moment. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best. And also, I'm going to be singing. Um, that was another thing she encouraged me to do was some vocals. Um, so we would do some duos together. And uh, this is Adio Querido, which is a song in Ladino. And uh, you guys get to hear this. <laughs> We've been having tuning issues all night, so... Okay, thank you. I, I, it's, I swear it's not me. <laughs> See, it's the me. <laughs> sure, it's definitely you. <laughs> the okay. the accordion. Yeah, thank you, Nat. The accordion. I swear, I'm like, it's so pitchy, and I don't understand why. Um, <laughs> and I don't have a strap, so this is kind of hard, but we'll do it. Thank you. 
So this was another song that I uh, that I wrote during COVID pandemic. <laughs> I accomplished quite a bit, um, and uh, it, it doesn't have it. Oh wait, I did name it something. I named it Les Araignées, which in French means the spiders, um, and it's a waltz. Cool. Yeah, you don't remember that? I don't. Oh really? <laughs> I was like into spiders at that time, and I decided it was like a good omen or something. You know, I have arachnophobia, so this is perfect. <laughs> I'm helping him overcome his fears. <laughs>
This is the last song from our set. Um, but do it right. Well, no, we should probably thank everybody. Oh. <laughs> but not him. He no, we're not going to thank Matt. No way. <laughs> for the accordion. When a clarinet is mixed with an accordion, uh, that's war. <laughs> Thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Really, it's, it's really wonderful to play in front of people. It's been so long, <laughs> a couple of years. So thank you so much. I want to thank the Boston Synagogue for having us, for Jay Arts, for Nat, for Joel. Um, who am I forgetting? Yes, I'm forgetting your name. <laughs> Peter, thank you. Um, and I want to introduce everyone again. These guys are like family to me. It's Michael McLaughlin on accordion. <laughs> Grant Smith on percussion. And Sean Farias on bass. If you like any of the music, feel free to send me an email or follow me on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or like my daughter would say, click like and subscribe <laughs> to my channel. Um, wait, 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 your daughter says this? Yep, she does. Five. <laughs> she makes videos and says, click like and subscribe. Put your comments. <laughs> She's very cute. Um, yes, but you know, we want to do this more. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, yeah, I'm Yuko. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for coming out and, what is it? Yeko, thank you. Um, okay, so this last tune is just called Habibi Ya'eni. My love, my eyes. My, my love, my eyes, yes.
Should we do one more? <laughs> Should we do one more? <laughs> All right. Just like I was on my No, no, my there's Moynihan in my family. Hand in my family. <laughs> All right. All right. This is a weird buzz with you. Yep. All right. Should we just go into it? Yeah, it's you two. Yeah. This is called High Terma. So I think Nat's gonna, are you gonna moderate the Q&A? Yeah. Scary part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>
are leaving, right? I do remember, I do totally, except you're, you're much big. Hey, nice to meet you. Thank you guys for coming tonight. It was so nice. Yeah, thanks so much. I'm glad you guys came. It was just, just, just the right amount of time for my arms. I was like, I was like, ah, oh, I can Oh, really? Oh, maybe it's all that yoga I'm doing lately. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I was asking about your music. Oh, yeah. Why don't we do it as part of the Q&A? Oh yeah. Some of it is written out. Yeah, yeah. We have charts for almost everything. A couple of things we don't have charts for because we just, we just don't. Oh yeah. Except we didn't play it today. Yeah. But I have. Yeah, I, I know. Just we should have had you come up and play it tonight. For a special guest artist. <laughs> no, but thanks so much for. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I have so many friends who said they were gonna come and didn't show up. Those are my friends. I know. I love my friends. I love my friends. <laughs> Oh my god, I had, Dana, Dana didn't have his vaccine card, Dana's right there, and he didn't have his vaccine card, I had to like okay. let them Okay, I'm going to talk into this microphone for a minute to make sure it works, and then we'll have a couple of minutes for Q&A, and anyone who wants to stay can stay, and Joel, you tell me when the level is good, okay? That's good, okay, you ready? ready? Is it just me? It's just you. <laughs> no one else is going to answer questions? No. <laughs> okay. Unless you want to talk about color <laughs> Okay, what are we talking? Okay. Okay. Hey everyone, so um, so I actually had a had a question just to get us started. And then we just want to hear from you what your questions were I mean, for Yako, but first of all, because it literally just came up, Yako, can you tell us about the music that you're playing and how we get from something in your head or something from an old record or wherever it is to this performance that we heard today? Didn't I answer this <laughs> in your blog? <laughs> we also got the, the now, question about the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so how did I? How do I get this onto a piece of paper? Like the ideas in my head? Yeah, and then how does it become what we've heard today? Um, so I, you know, I, I kind of, I don't have a very tradition. You know, I didn't go to school for composition or anything like that. I never wrote any music when I was in college. I, I was telling Nat when we we spoke that it never occurred to me to write music. <laughs> I was just sort of like, I play the violin. Is this, is this my mic? Okay. Um, so um, I was a little bit sad <laughs> and a little bit triggered by someone's comment to me. And, uh, and uh, I decided, you know what, I can write music. I can do this. I can, I have songs in my, in my head all the time. So. Hey Joel, is that her microphone? Should I, I give her my? Okay. Should I just move further away, or? I mean, I can speak really loudly if you want me to. Yeah. Oh, on the Zoom. Okay. No problem. Okay.
don't know where I was at. <laughs> where was it? What was I saying? It's the story of my life. Oh yeah, I was triggered. Um, yeah, no, and I decided to. I decided to, you know, start. I always heard melodies in my head, and I think I just didn't think to write anything. So I just started recording songs and onto like a little phone recorder, and then um, putting them together, like little melodies, and then uh, I just decided to to start doing that. And I have a whole bunch at home. I just haven't put them on paper yet. Um, but that's essentially it. It's really like melodies flowing in my head. And like I just, I'm always singing. So and I just put them out there and it has a lot of influence. My family is very, my mother's from France and my father's from El Salvador. So I heard a lot of different kinds of music and um, a lot of different influences. And we grew, we grew up in a pretty, what I would say, interesting family. and. Um, with the big influence of the arts. Um, so I heard, I heard French music, Latin American music, a lot of jazz, um, folk music, you know. Oh, and then I was classically trained. So it's sort of like everything just came together. So, and I'm dramatic and emotional, so. <laughs> Very. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How often do you lose a string like that? And it was it the never first, happens. What was the first thing that you noticed that was different, right? For people who are listening, oh. I'm how often do you lose a string like that? And what did you notice? Well, I didn't lose a string I know, today. That oh. Was like excessive, uh, oh, yeah, it just unstarted and unraveling. It started to unravel. Yeah, it doesn't happen that often. It doesn't happen often, and I could just feel it was basically just when I was sliding my my finger on the A string. It was just. But you felt it before you heard it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah I felt it. Yeah, no. And I mean, I could maybe suck it up, but I was kind of so getting like, annoying. Like, how so, long were you going on the the the, the, the Maybe a song or two. All right. I was like, okay, time to put this so that doesn't there. happen very often. No, no, no. All right. No, it's not a common thing. No. <laughs> of life and I got called for that and um, it was super exciting to be on that stage and just listen to that album and be so close so that it was really it was great what is it I'm not sure if I well I, I think he was the star <laughs> it wasn't me <laughs> how did you make your way to club members? The question is, how did you make your way to Klezmer music? Yeah, so uh, I was at NEC and I was um, in the third stream department and um, I joined the Jewish music ensemble that was led by Hankus Nutsky, who started the Klezmer Conservatory Band. And um, I really liked it, it was really fun. It gave me the opportunity to play the violin and let, let go a little bit more and it brought me back to the sort of like the old world violinist that I would listen to when I was a kid, like um, like Heifetz and Menuhin, and I used to listen to a ton of Chrysler um, in, on like a cassette tape before I would go to sleep. So it kind of had that warm old world feeling, and, um, and you know all the influences from Eastern Europe and Turkey and the Middle East, and I, I love the sound and, and the scales, and um, that's how, basically how, and then and then I just got into it. And it was kind of like natural, and um, and then I joined KCB after college. Afterwards, Hankus um, had me sub, and their violinist happened to quit after that, and then I joined. So I got lucky. <laughs> it was the right gig. So. Amazing. Yeah. Speaking of the right gig, something I'm always curious about. Yeah. Do you have a, a favorite gig that? lives in your mind and be the craziest thing you've ever played that you'll never forget. Oh my god. And it could be the same I don't even remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, uh, I don't know. What's a crazy gig? What's can oh what is it? Oh it wasn't the craziest gig I did, but it was like the scariest one for me. I was doing um a, a run of Schlemiel with Grant. We went to New York this was about ten years ago, right Grant? Or eight years ago, or nine, I don't know, it was something. <laughs> it was like a five week run of Schlemiel the First in New York, and um, 
they were like, you're gonna be dragged on a schmata across the stage that was slanted because it was supposed to be like crooked helm or something. And I was like, what? I was like, I don't, I don't get dragged on schmatas and <laughs> while I'm playing the violin. And it was, I had a lot of anxiety about that. I remember that. I was anxious about that for like the entire run because we got to do that show every night. You know it? We ran up and discussed with us and we're going to add that to our act. <laughs> so I would stand there. I was dressed like a, like a young boy and <laughs> I had the hat on and then I was sitting on this like cloth and then this guy would drag me across while I was playing my violin and I was just terrified and I'd have to do it. So that was, that was scary. That wasn't the craziest probably, but it was scary and I had anxiety over it. <laughs> do you have a favorite one that you do? Oh god, I think I like playing with these guys the best. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. There's, there's like there's like a um, <laughs> there's there's like a chem there's a chemistry. It's like we're we're creating something when we when we're playing, and we've been doing this music for a long time, and um, but it's different every time. How long you been playing? How long you been doing the show? Like I've been playing since I was three. Wow. That's <laughs> so good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so one thing that you mentioned is that this group hasn't had a chance to play together very much lately, and I think a lot of us can empathize with that feeling you know, this last year and a half, being very quiet. What do you have in store for the next year that you're looking forward to performing, composing? I d I, I'm hoping that... Um, <clears throat> We will do some more concerts, actually. I'm really hoping for that. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping that we will do more <coughs> venues, maybe even, I was talking to Grant earlier, I was like, maybe we can get some even like clubs or bars or something like that, wherever, you know. Um, it's been, it's still been a little funny, but, um, you know, besides all the, the weddings that we all play and all, you know, the bar mitzvahs, I've done a ton of those and I do a ton of like electric violin with DJ gigs too, it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I really hope that we do more um, with this group, and maybe I'll even add more vocals and more compositions too. Maybe I'll get better on the mandolin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one or two more questions. Did, did you write all the tunes that you played tonight? No, just two of them. Just those first two? Oh, not the first two. The waltz, um, the one, the, the one that was like, you wrote the song. and the tango. Yeah. 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 The song is beautiful. Oh, thank you. You should sing more. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I actually have to tell you, Diego, I, I listened to the Boiler House um, stream that you did with Sonia. Oh, yeah. And I just thought, why, what? <laughs> I didn't know she sings. Oh. It was yeah, me neither. <laughs> and, and you two sound so amazing together, the two oh, of you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, so, she was awesome. It was really nice to have to play with another female and have that support. Of, and she's, you know, she sings a time everyone knows her and, and she was like you should really be singing and I was like really and I, she was like yeah and I was like okay I'll try and we started she really that was awesome so I hope to do more of that and I like singing in languages as well yeah I should mention for everyone who is here or watching online too that there's a playlist through our YouTube channel of your stuff and oh, yeah. the um, and that these guys too. yeah, yeah there, there's a bunch of stuff with these folks on it there's also your concert with Sonia yeah. Oh, yeah. um, so they can, everyone can go listen. Click like, just, click <laughs> <laughs> like. I need more followers here. Yeah. Um, I think we have time for one more question sure. from the audience. Does anyone have anything? Michael, I'm cold calling you. <laughs> oh, actual question. Uh, I grew up with bluegrass music. Okay. And, um, with the violin, I know it's like minor key and different keys, but it, it does, there's some similarities seem like, other than playing fast, but do you, is there any connection between the two? Or? Honestly, I wouldn't really know. Do you have an answer for that? <laughs> there's like the long answer. And then <laughs> oh God, you, you, I don't know the long yeah. answer. <laughs> but what was the question? Is there a connection between bluegrass and this music? Yeah, I mean, we get asked a lot. I don't know if you get this. Um, we play a lot in an Irish pub. And oh, yeah. so we get a lot of people coming up to us saying, hey, I love Celtic fiddling. You guys, clearly, you also do Celtic fiddling. There's so much connection. And I think what it comes down to is that the music, like, they, they come from really different places, but there are also different styles that have to do with people having a great time and showing yep. virtuosity, too, yep. with their instrument. And so even though they come out of really different cultural traditions, 
what people are trying to do within that cultural tradition is actually really similar in many cases. So I, I tend to think that's what people are picking up yeah. on. Is you've got people dancing, you've got people really like, playing their heart out. And then every once in a while you have someone like Andy Statman who just happens to, oh, be, yeah. kind of, happens to do both. He's a crossover, yeah. The one. The one, the only one. No, there's got to be another one. <laughs> there's got to be someone. <laughs> Yeah, there's one more. <laughs> I got a theoretical question. I'll, t I'll talk to you about my theoretical <laughs> <laughs> My music theory. Nobody wants to hear about music theory. <laughs> uh, so I think that's all the time we have for this, but if anyone wants to stay afterwards, you're welcome. Jacob has a lot of CDs over there, and they're amazing. Completely amazing, so please do grab one on the way out. And if you'd like to donate to the festival to keep great music coming, there are donation envelopes there as well. And thank you all for coming. And thank you, Michael. Thank you, thank you, Michael, Michael Graham, and Sean. <laughs> thank you, Matt. <laughs>